Hi, in this part, we we'll look at how uh, the most of the value of the n two k is concentrated in the middle. So we 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 we'll look at how the function change in the middle. Okay. So previously we proved that the maximum of the uh, binomial coefficient is at uh, the case when uh, n equals uh, k is equals n over two. Okay. Um, and from the graph, you can see that most of the thing will be here, and then it drops pretty quickly down to zero. So, one of the thing uh, are, are around the middle here. Okay, so 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 in, in this part of the lecture, we'll look at how how that thing works. Okay, so because we all only consider only even n, so we we'll let uh, we we we'll, we'll use m instead. So we we'll let two m equals n, then we can say uh, two m and m. Okay, to to mean uh, m to m is n and m is n over two. Okay, so we want to quantify how far the value drops um, from the middle is to think about the the ratio. This this is the ratio. So what is exactly this ratio? So we know that the maximum is, is at m. Okay, and if we move uh, further, okay, to here, this is m minus t. We want to see. Uh, how small the this compared to that? Okay, like uh, like we wanna we want probably wanna ask like how far do we have to go from m from the middle until uh, the value drop by a half? Okay, so if this is a hundred, so this is f fifty. So that's that's like uh, half life, but not exactly that. But that's what we're go gonna look at. So we s look at the ratio when the function is at m minus t compare the function when it's at the middle m okay all right uh in fact without it is known we don't need to derive it uh it is known that this is like this behave like a uh, function like this e to the minus t square over m so this is how it drops uh but we'll prove that something close to this pretty soon so how does it look okay so um um so let's see the graphs so I, I'll, I'll plot it. Uh, so the the gray uh, bars are the actual value, and the red lines is uh, e to the minus uh, t square over m. You can see that it's pretty close, right? But looking at the graph, we might we might not be satisfied about what we are doing, right? So we want to prove something related to this uh, drops of the function. So uh, let's try to use our uh, known tools for estimating this value and to see how can we uh, we get a bound that is close to this ex uh, this bar is pretty close if you look at the, the graph right it's really really close we get a bound that looks like this but not as close okay with our our elementary tools okay all right so um, because l as as we did before uh, dealing with number less than one with logarithms like it's hard because you're gonna get negative number and everything will be like crazy. Okay, so uh, we look we work on the reciprocal. So uh, instead of calculating the ratio between two m choose m minus t over two m choose m, we calculate the ratio uh, the the reciprocal of that ratio. So this one is always larger than that. So you you get something larger than one. Okay, so if you do that, uh, then uh, you plug in the numbers. So 2m choose 2 is this thing, and 2m choose m minus t is this thing. Uh, but uh, it's divided by that, so I, I, I flip the side. Okay, so 2m factor is here, and this is the what used to be the denominator. Okay, so you expand it, and rewrite it, and you get this. Okay, because 2m cancel out, and um, uh, m here cancel out. Okay, so you get... Uh, Okay, all right. So so you get this bound. Okay, so this is the number. This is the ratio between uh, two to two to m choose m over two uh, uh, m choose m minus t. Okay, how can you derive this yourself? All right. So you can just take a look. Okay. Um, all right. To see that you get this derivation. Uh, this is 2m minus m, right? So it, it's just m. Right, so this is m plus t factorial. And it 
sort of it's cancel out with uh, m right so you get m plus t m plus c minus one until you get to m plus one here all right and this is m minus t factorial so uh, it cancel out with this m factorial so you get m factorial m minus one up to uh, m minus t plus one here so this is this is what left of m factorial this is what left of m plus t factorial okay so you get this bound okay and again uh, we can use the same trick because this is a product of many things right so it's a product of m plus t over m times m plus t minus 1 over m minus 1 times something up t down to m plus 1 times uh, over m minus t plus 1 right so the product is hard to deal with so we will just take the log and see the see the addition the sum of this uh, factor instead okay so let's take the log now after you take a log you get this okay so when when we have logs we know that we have a bound on 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 the the log function right log natural log function so use it here so that's the bound that we used before when when we analyzed the birthday problem okay so the upper bound is uh, of of ln x is uh, x minus 1 and the low bar is x minus 1 over x okay so let's try to use the upper bound first okay to derive something okay but recall that although this is the upper bound it's you're going to get the upper bound on on this ratio okay but the upper bound on this ra ratio is not the thing that we actually want right because this ratio is the reciprocal of what we want so the upper bound we would act as the lower bound when we when we uh, take the reciprocal back okay Alright, so we know that each term is going to be less than uh, x minus 1. Is this term is going to be less than m plus t over m minus 1, and so on. So we can try to use this bound for all the terms and to get the upper bounds on the this sum. Okay, so let's do that. Each of the term is of this form, if you recall. So go back. So this is m plus t minus something, right? This is cut the 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 denominator is m minus something, so which is the same thing, right? So I put i as that, so you get um, oh okay, so this is uh, this is wrong, so this has to be uh, m plus t minus i over m minus i, okay. All right, so this is a log. This is the 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 common forms. So we plug in. This is our x is going to be less than x minus one, and do some work. So this is minus one. So you get minus m plus i here, and this subtract this cancel out m and i. You get t equals. Uh, this is going to be at most t over m minus i. Okay. We put the upper bounds into everything. So we from this from the sum of the logs is going to be the this terms okay so this term is upper bound by this this is upper bound by that the last one is upper bounded by this one okay all right but the denominator is not the same so it's it's hard to deal with however note that this is the smallest uh, denominators so if we round everything down to this number we're going to get uh, the value is going to increase right so we get we still get the upper bound so we low bound m by this m minus 1 by that okay and now they're the same right and there are how many terms there are t t, t terms here okay so um you sum up and you get that it's t square over m minus t plus 1 now you can put that in to the formula so we know that the log natural log of this is at most that that is if we put back so so uh, uh, put back the e you get this equals that and this is like less than e to the t square over m minus t plus one okay all right and and you t turn it back and then you get this okay so you see that this is like at least this much okay now the actual uh, approximation of this value that I showed you before you remember that is this uh, okay, uh, you can do the same to get the upper bound on this. 
okay and that that you that would you do in in in, in the homework probably so you get the derived uh estimates uh using elementary tools okay so if you want to compare this with the uh actual uh the the uh, the better estimate that i've shown you before it is this so um instead of uh e to the t square over m you have on the low bound you have something something that subtract from m on the upper bound you have t plus m so this is a little bit uh, lower this is a little bit uh, higher so that's that's what we can derive okay all right so why do we need to derive all this okay because we want to see how fast thing drops okay so let's use the better estimate okay now um we can uh try to do some calculation to get to figure out uh, the value of t which is how far you go from the middle so if you given a constancy say if you want to see uh, how far thing drops down by a half so we can set c to be 2 okay so we want to uh, we want to figure out the value of t such that this thing this the term of the middle is less than the middle over c okay so if c is 2 then it's dropped by half okay so um we can state the inequality like this okay and we solve it by just take the logs and do some math and we get that uh okay take the logs so you get that uh natural log of 1 over c has to be larger than uh, t minus 1 over m and you do some math you get that uh if t is larger than this uh square root uh, m uh, natural log of c then you can roughly be sure that it's the value dropped by a factor of t uh, of c here so let's try to be concrete okay so look at you can look at the, the graph here so now we have uh this is n so m is uh 20 okay and the largest is here at the 20 right largest if we look at the value when things drop by by a half so we plug in c t equals 2 and the uh, previous while says that if t is larger than square root of two, 20 times natural log of 2 then you likely uh, you 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 drop uh, the value drop by a half so this is 3.7 so 20 minus 3 so it's like 16 right and this is like drop by a half right so this is one this is the highest value it's dropped by a half and you 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 add 16 and this is like pretty close right this is uh, you have to subtract by uh, 3.7 and th if you do that then you get to 16 right from 20 uh, or if you add by uh, uh, something almost like four four you get to 20 and this is like about a half so this is the bound that we can derive using elementary tools an estimation technique that we have learned uh, before. Um, this is not the core materials of discrete mathematics, but it uh, present a nice technique for estimations and, and, and reasoning about functions that we are interested in. Okay, so, uh, so this is it for, for the binomial coefficients. In the next lecture, uh, we'll look at Fibonacci numbers.